breaking down all the plays and getting you in the action. We've got you covered all season long. Welcome to the BCSN Nation podcast powered by Marco's Pizza. Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome on in to the latest edition of the BCSN Nation podcast plodding right along through the high school basketball season here in Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan. We started this way back in the fall prior to the fall sports season. This is episode 24, so we're nearing 30 episodes. As always, we are powered by Marco's Pizza. We are proud to be powered by Marco's Pizza. I am Justin Feldkamp alongside Red Boyd, breaking down everything tournament style, boys and girls, final weeks of the regular season. We got it all here in this edition of the podcast. Check us out on our BCSN social media platforms at BCSN Sports on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. This episode and all episodes debut, they drop on Wednesdays at 3 o'clock. Anywhere you get your podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and bcsnnation.com slash podcast and on our YouTube channel. All right, Rhett, let's get into it. We always hit each and every conference or league on the boys and girls side during the basketball portion of this podcast. So we'll start in the Northern Lakes League. Anthony Wayne beat Perrysburg in double overtime so now as we enter play as of going into tuesday night we have a three-way tie for first place in the northern lakes league yeah and and that was a result of you said anthony wayne beating perrysburg in two ot's and anthony wayne is hot right now they won five of their last six ball games and the big reason you know watching this team in person has been aiden schmink and he's given them that third consistent double-digit score, and, he, and he's why they've been that, more, that much more dynamic on the offensive end. He's had some big games against Springfield. It turned around the very next night against Tiffin Columbia. He had 20 against Springfield, 17 against Columbia, and then in that Perrysburg game was in double digits once again. Uh, he's made them a different team. And so if they can continue that uh, going forward, uh, they're, they're going to be a tough beat. But we're going to get a lot of clarity tonight uh, when – when Perrysburg and Springfield match up, uh, we'll get more clarity going into Friday. Yep. All right. And with Anthony Wayne, I just thought in that game, we were watching it live on the set during Game Day Nation on Friday night, and Anthony Wayne was just a little scrappier. They yeah. just seemed to have wanted yeah. it a little bit more. The last few minutes of regulation for Perrysburg, they seemed discombobulated, a little uh, bad body language, in my opinion, between some of the players, and they just weren't executing, turning the ball over, uh, poor choice in, in having fouls far away from the basket. All of it added up, and all of it added up to a loss for them and a win for A-Dub. Yeah, and I agree with that. I, I thought Anthony Wayne just played harder. I mean, you said scrappier, you know, play harder. And, and I thought, too, and when it was crunch time, you know, one thing about Perrysburg is it makes it very difficult to guard is how many different sets they run, and they run it so precisely. But one thing that Coach Josh Arthur and Anthony Wayne is they, they, they game plan extremely well, and they know when the ball goes to a certain, you know, let's say the high post entry, you know that's a back cut coming. So you know, what they did at the end of that game is they doubled. The, the guy guarding the passer doubled the ball, doubled the elbow when the elbow guy at the elbow turned his back, and that c- created a couple turnovers late. So, you know, give credit to Coach Arthur and his staff for, for game planning, scheming, and the players for, for buying into it and, and getting that game plan down and executed at a very high level. It was a big win for them after getting beat by 20 on their own floor uh, earlier this year. So Anthony Wayne, Perrysburg, and – uh, Springfield all tied for first place. Two losses in league play for them as they enter Tuesday night's play. And then we'll see how this plays out over the next uh, week or so to determine a potential outright or a tie for first place in that league. All right, let's move to the Three Rivers Athletic Conference. We saw Central Catholic lose at Lima Senior this past Friday night. Whitmer maintains first place. They beat St. John's in overtime on Friday, then follow that up with a win against a very good Defiance team, a Defiance team that was ranked seventh. It is currently ranked seventh in the state in Division Two. So uh, the brackets have come out uh, uh, on that side as well, but maybe not surprising, but Dion and I were on this podcast last week talking about Lima Senior. That's a team that no one would want to play come tournament time, and uh, Coach Quincy Simpson seems to be pressing the right buttons, and and Central Catholic was up at the top along with Whitmer in the track, but uh, they find themselves in in a battle for a title. Yeah, and that Lima Lima team, you know, going into last week, all their losses on the year were in the track. They've run the table in the non-conference and played some really good teams. Right. 
So you get, you get Central and Whitmer both going on the road to Lima. Lima gets it done. And, and what that allowed them to do, you know, they're still not in the race for the track, but they, it allowed them to really elevate themselves when it comes to the seedings in the, in the district tournament. They, they jumped to the fourth seed from where they were entering uh, uh, last week. It was a big jump. And, they, and I think they got to like their draw, too. You know, they, they put themselves in a good position. But the Whitmer Central, you know, Whitmer Central, you know, Whitmer's up one game now, and then Central can, you know, is down one but can – tie at least for a share maybe at the yep. end of the Friday. In my opinion, when if you put every if everybody is right, like all the teams are on their A game, yeah. I truly believe Whitmer and Central are two of the of the of the best teams in Northwest Ohio. But yep. they both have like they they both of them and a handful of others who I think could win this district mm-hmm. or the respective districts. We have two of them. Yeah. They they they've shown some some chinks in the armor. Yeah. For example, let's talk, you know, talk about Whitmer for a minute. Since the central win that they had, they find themselves down 20 to Fremont in the first half. They Good enough, come back and get a win. Yeah. They go to Finley, get a four-point win. But they were two for 10 from the foul line in the fourth quarter. Could have made it a lot easier on themselves. They, they beat St. Francis by two at home in, in, a, narrow, in a narrow victory. Uh, they have a, they have a double-digit lead with, with Detroit Jesuit. Great team out of, out of you know, Detroit, obviously. Uh, they lose that lead, lose the game in overtime. Now, they come back with a, with two very good wins last week. St. John's at home in overtime, like you said. A defiance team that only had one loss up to that point. They got that win. So they're, they're, they're really good when they're right. Mm-hmm. They can beat anybody. But, but they've shown some, you know, can they finish games? You know, they've, that's kind of been a hiccup for them, um, you know, since they played that Central game the first time. And then for Central, after they, after they got beat by Whitmer, Pretty handily that first game. They get a big win at Perrysburg. Like, mm-hmm. okay, here they go. And then they drop a game to St. Francis at home. And then they, you know, Lima, who a team they beat the first time, you know, they, they go down the Lima, as we said, they lost um, in, down there. So I, I think, in my opinion, those two teams are, are two of the best, along with four or five others, I think, could win the district. They've all shown, like, glimpses in games where they're outstanding. Or in stretches of games, game you know one, two, three, four games in a row where they're outstanding, but then they have a hiccup, or, or they're just not. Maybe they're on their B game, and yeah. that, that happens with kids, and it's it's nothing out of the ordinary. It's just the how you know it's hard to you know who's going to come out of this. Is there a lock to come out of this district, or who's locked to win this league? You yeah. don't have that, which makes it fun for us. It's a lot of parody, right? Uh, but I think it's interesting to watch Whitmer and Central in the game this week. And then moving forward into the tournament, you know, can they turn it on and hit their stride and really play clean basketball? Yeah, when you talk about the NLL and the track, once you get to the district portion, sectional and district portion, that's really where they go head to head in many respects. So let's talk about the bracket here in Division One in Whitmer. They're the one seed, so they will play the winner of Bowser and Ashland, and then they would face the winner, assuming a victory there, they would face the winner of Start and Southview. Start is the seven seed; they'd be favored to win that. So we could get in the district semifinals a. Whitmer versus Start showdown. Yeah, and I think with the with the RPI called the RPI Martin RPI. Yeah, it is. Um, it is the RPI. It, it got a little a little more clarity with the formula. I was reading it's strength of schedule, strength of your opponent's schedule, and strength of your opponent's opponent schedule. schedule. Yep. Um, it, and it all fil- filters out. It, I think Start is one of those teams. If you if the coaches were still voting, would be a higher seed than seven. Yeah. So you know, so for them, you know, them playing Whitmer in the in the district semifinals, that's a game that start won earlier this year. Yep. Up twenty at the half, end up winning by ten, I believe. Um, a game that you know, obviously, they have a tremendous amount of confidence. They don't fear Whitmer. Mm-hmm. And then the other side of the coin, Whitmer, hungry and motivated by that loss. That be that's going to be a heck of a matchup if indeed that does play out. We do have it. Yeah. Also in that same uh, bracket with Whitmer and, and Start, you also have Anthony Wayne and Finley going head to head in the sectional finals. That's a good one. You got Tiffin Columbian, the two seed, awaiting the winner of St. John's and Wait. Another good one. Uh, you'd see uh, St. John's advances there uh, based on the seeding. They would face Tiffin Columbian. Uh, Logan Beeston is their star player. Yeah. Uh, he's definitely one to watch. So we could have Finley and Tiffin Columbian. We could have Anthony Wayne. I could see Anthony Wayne possibly. <laughs> Possibly upsetting Finley. A lot of uh, different interaction there. I can see St. John's maybe mm-hmm. may playing mm-hmm. a, an A game and maybe upsetting yeah. Tiffin Columbian. So we'll have that. And then on the other side of the bracket, um, 
with the D1. We talked about uh, Lima Senior. They're a four seed facing Fremont Ross. They could run into Northview, a team that they faced last year in the postseason. And then you also got Perrysburg, the three seed as of right now. Uh, they could face St. Francis, could face Springfield again in the district semifinals. Yeah. And those games that you mentioned in the sectional final, like the Springfield um – he said Springfield and St. Francis or yep. Anthony Wayne Finley, St. Yeah. John's typically. I mean, those are those are district regional type games that we're yeah. getting early in this. And I agree with you. I think St. John's, that is a team under the radar in the sense they've been highly competitive in the biggest games on their schedule. They just haven't been able to kind of get over the hump a little bit. But if they put it together and play this the a Tiffin team who's a two seed, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if St. John's won. Logan Beeson is is, is is a problem for Tiffin Columbia against most teams, obviously. Uh, just set the school record against Anthony Wayne uh, a week, a few, uh, 10 days ago uh, when they beat Anthony Wayne by one. Um, Tiffin Columbia beat Sandusky. It's, what, it's Sandusky's only loss of the year. So, the, you know, they're definitely a viable opponent. St. John's, well, that's a team. Would be surprised if they came out and, and won. Anthony Wayne Finley, flip a coin. Jake Bishop can get you 30. Anthony Wayne's hot right now, like we said. I mean, I mean that's must-see TV. Yeah, I think uh, we are zeroing in on that game between Finley and Anthony Wayne as the BCSN Friday night game of the week once we get to that portion of the tournament schedule later in the month of February. We talked about Start. They are uh, at the top of the City League, challenged by Scott. Start and Scott play each other on a Tuesday of this week, and then they will turn their attention towards the City League uh, tournament and championship Looks like those two teams should meet in the championship finals. Scott drew the four seed in their bracket come tournament time. They would face the winner of Port Clinton and Clyde. Scott could, if the seeds hold, win and then likely face Central Catholic, the one seed in the district semifinals. You also have Rossford. We wanted to talk about the Northern Buckeye Conference as well. They're 12-0 and in the NBC, and they will face Genoa come at the end of the regular season. Rossford wins that. They would win the outright NBC league title, and then they will turn their attention to the two seed. They will be the two seed, face the winner of Maumee versus Bryan. You'd see Rossford advancing there, likely facing Wasion, who is the three seed in the Division II bracket there. So if the seeds hold, we'd get Rossford versus Wasion and Scott versus Central Catholic. Uh, I think a lot of people might want to see uh, if it plays out, but they that Central Catholic versus Rossford matchup could be pretty juicy in the yeah. district championship. That, that would be a, a sight to see a game that, again, must see TV, but careful because that Wasion team yeah. Just beat Rossford by 12 two weeks ago. Correct. And so, obviously, you know, there's some familiarity on both sides now, you know, with each other. Uh, Wasion is a team that uh, I was talking to a coach in the NWAL earlier. Um, you know, they lost to Anthony Wayne. They lost to Northview. You know, they, but they just turned around the last two weeks, and we said they beat um, Springfield, mm -hmm. and then they beat Rossford. So it's a team that is um, a, a, a good team, took some, you know, had some close games, came with some losses early, but have really started to hit their stride, played really good basketball. Uh, but, yeah, but if but if indeed that Rossford does get by them this next time they play and play Central Catholic, that's, that, that's going to be a dandy. All right, so we mentioned Anthony Wayne beating Perrysburg in double overtime this past Friday. Most cases you'd say that was the clear-cut game of the week. That was not the case because we had an even better one in the tack between Cardinal Stritch and Emmanuel Christian. EC at Stritch, a clutch shot by Breon Hicks, a pass from Christian Burton. Uh, Breon Hicks hits the corner three for the lead. Emmanuel Christian calls a timeout, gets the ball. Jerry Easter Jr. drives, goes off the rim, scramble for the rebound, loose ball, time runs out, game over. Stritch storms the court, student section going nuts, and Stritz gets the victory. What a game. It was an outstanding game, especially in that environment at Cardinal Stritch. It's a smaller gym. It's packed. Yeah, the kids are on the stage, and uh, it, it was, it's a heck of a high school atmosphere. You know, you kind of when you summarize that game up, Cardinal Stritch, if we associate it to a boxing match, Cardinal Stritch took a couple standing eight counts in that game, but they didn't get knocked out. They were just hung around, and they hung around. They were down 10 with four minutes to go in that game. Yeah. Just made a shot or two just to stay within arm's reach, and they got a couple stops at the end of the game when they needed. You said it. Christian Burton, he's the catalyst of that team. They got a lot of scores between himself and Hicks and Cam Hughes. Uh, uh, Carter had a huge night. He, he was at 21, I believe, for Cardinal Stritch that night. But Christian Burton is what makes them go. 
His ability to handle the basketball versus pressure, his ability to break down the defense and create off the dribble, not only for himself but to set his teammates up with great looks, uh, was pivotal in, in, in that ball game and their success this whole year. Um, it's, it's a great win for them. should give them a ton of confidence. And when you look at that bracket, right, kind of stretches opposite of Emmanuel Christian in terms of different districts, which yep. – Maybe you see him again in the regional. Yeah, and uh, despite that loss, Emmanuel Christian still has the edge in the standing, so they, in all likelihood, will win the tack in an outright fashion. Uh, but, yes, in talking about the bracket, Cardinal Stritch is a one seed on their own bracket, known sheet of paper. You got uh, Ottawa Glandorf, a one seed, also in Division Three on their own bracket and own sheet of paper. And then you have... Emmanuel Christian, a one seed in Division Three on their own bracket and own sheet of paper. So if all three of those top seeds advance, we'd have some big-time yeah. matchups at BGSU's Stroh Center, uh, and, and those would be some pivotal games for – you know, two hyper area Toledo teams, yeah. and then Ottawa Glendorf, who uh, I believe made it all the way to the state championship game last year and came up short. But yeah, th- those types of teams, uh, they earned those one seeds Absolutely. throughout regular season play up to this point. Sign me up. <laughs> yeah. Sign me up for that for that potential regional because I, because I think those teams are really solid. From the number one, you got to have point guard play. Both teams have it, and, and then you got to have you know. Got a couple, one, two guys for sure to get another, they can get you double digits, and then you got to have some size inside too. They both have it, so those are the pieces you want. You know, just a matter of, in a one and done format of executing for 32 minutes against elite competition. Yeah, and then as we progress down to Division Four in the brackets for the boys side, uh, we have uh, Patrick Henry as a one seed. Uh, we also have uh, Toledo Christian. In there, they are a three seed, so they would play a sectional semifinal, a sectional final, and then they could face Antwerp, a team that they have faced in the past. Uh, Toledo Christian will have their hands full, uh, likely not for that first game, but potentially for that second game against potentially Stryker or mm-hmm. North Central, and then Antwerp, a clear cut favorite there, is the two seed to get to the district semifinals. Yeah, and Toledo Christian has played Stryker also. They beat them earlier this year, and it's, I'm. That's a team, right? They lost Kanye Gas in a few weeks ago to season-ending injury. You know, you know, just feel bad for for that kid. Um, but Toledo Christian now has kind of had to re refine their or kind of redefine roles yep. and, and create it. You know, and find their identity again. Uh, they got a big win over Mommy Valley last week by twenty-two, and now and on Tuesday night um, they're squaring off with Swanton. You know, a game that we're going to cover. Um, and Swanton's the two seed in their respective in that district with Emmanuel Christian. Swanton's Correct. the two seed, so it's a chance for them to, you know, they got a couple games under their belt without Kanye Gaston. Now you test yourself against a quality opponent, see where you're at, and, and create some momentum for yourself moving into the tournament. Yeah, and uh, Emmanuel Christian could face Swanton or possibly Delta. Delta has had a very good mm-hmm. season in the NWOL. Cardinal Stritch, if the seeds hold, they would face Ashland Crestview in the district championship game. Okay, all right, that's a wrap on the boys' side. What about the girls' side as we get closer? They are one week ahead in the regular season, ahead of the boys, so their tournament will start one week earlier. In the NLL, uh, Rhett, we have uh, Anthony Wayne in first place, Springfield in second place as we enter that final week. Napoleon is at Anthony Wayne Thursday. Springfield is at Perrysburg Thursday. So, based on that, if both teams win, Anthony Wayne would clinch the NLL. And then how Anthony Wayne got the one-game lead over Springfield was that they beat him to create a tie, and then Springfield lost to Southview uh, the next ball game. Um, they had two really tight games with Southview, and now I think Anthony Wayne gets through Napoleon. And Springfield and Perrysburg, it's going to be a tight one again because this one's at Perrysburg. Uh, the, the first matchup between the two at Springfield was a two-point game, three-point game, yeah. and right down to the wire. So uh, a good chance for, for Springfield to get a big win, a quality win, uh, and get some momentum, positive momentum going back as they head into the tournament. Yeah, Coach Sims does a solid job at Absolutely. Perrysburg. Always teams better in February than mm-hmm. they were in January or, or when they were in December. Yep. And uh, they were coming off a win on Monday night against Whitmer, yep. a game that was, uh, can be seen live on the BCSN Now app. Uh, but yeah, so Anthony Wayne looking to be in the driver's seat and they are a one seed in their bracket and have their sights set on another deep playoff run. All right. In the three rivers athletic conference, uh, the last podcast, we were entering a chance for central Catholic to win the outright title. They did do that despite a slip up, uh, not too long ago on the road at Fremont Ross central Catholic bounced back Fremont Ross 
faltered a little bit in uh, some games following that win against Central Catholic, but Coach Erica Haney has taken the Irish to back-to-back track titles. Yeah, and, and just has had a core group of kids, young a core group of young players that are hungry and motivated. Uh, and it all starts, like I said, when you, get, when you have really good teams, just look at one position. I, I guarantee you they got great point guard play. And Central Catholic does in Cornelia Clay. You have the inside-out punch with her, and you got Brooklyn Vaughn on the inside, high motor. And then, then Mary Ellis, who's kind of like the glue to that team. She can do a little bit of everything, knock down threes, put the ball on the floor, great defender. And mm-hmm. then you got the other role players that simply – to step in and play to their strength. Jada Dames now in the starting lineup uh, can extend the defense as well, and they and they play collectively, cohesively together. And, and there, there's no doubt, looking at that bracket, uh, that they can make they can make a good run in this tournament. Yeah, they're clear cut to win the district. They they it'll be a disappointment if they don't get there. Uh, then reach the regionals. And you're talking about the top six teams in Division Two, and right now the latest state rankings, mm-hmm. Central Catholic is tied for first with. Kettering Alter, Central Catholic with a 19-2 and overall record. So, yes, they are the heavy favorites to come out of the district uh, in their bracket and then reach the regionals uh, in Division II girls' side. All right, City League. Start went undefeated in their uh, regular season play. They are the favorites once again. They also are ranked in Division One in the state rankings. They cracked the list after not being ranked all season. They are now 17-2, and two, and they come in at the 10 spot uh, as we near postseason play. Yeah, and I think that's another team. We talked about the boys maybe being with the RPI, um, being a little bit lower. And start was the three seed, and I think, you know, that's probably as low – is maybe coaches would have voted them. I think some coaches would have voted them first, yeah. if not second, if they were still voting. But um, I think that the strength of schedule of their league probably brought them down a little bit in terms of the RPI. But uh, they're good. They're really good. I got to see them in person last Thursday against Rogers, you know, which kind of sealed that regular season title for them. And it starts in the perimeter uh, with their perimeter players. You got obviously yep. Sonai Douglas. And she, as good as she is offensively, she is as good of a disruptor defensively for opposing teams rhythm offensively she she made her and ty garrison um and, and sylvester made rogers lateral drivers meaning east west side to side drivers never allowed them to turn the corner and break down their defense and it really threw rogers out of the rhythm rogers took some tough contested shots start rebound at a high level got out and ran and that's when they're at their very best and when you got three when you got three players like that they can get you 15 plus a night you're hard to guard so they, uh, they've had an outstanding year. They played a, a great schedule, won some big games. Akron Hoban, uh, Laurel recently, yep. uh, who's a high-ranked state team in Division III. Um, I think they really got a shot uh, of making a, a, a deep run again. They got to the regional final last year against Anthony Wayne. We could see that again. Yeah, and I think you talk about the, the, the rankings, Martin RPI, and then coaches voting. Mm-hmm. For those who may not know, Martin RPI is a – in a, a testing phase, if you will, through uh, a potential partnership with the OHSA. It is similar to the high school football rankings, points uh, tallied throughout the regular season based on your record, opponent's record, opponent's opponent's record, et cetera, and then a point total assigned to it. And then in Northwest Ohio in this year, 2023, they are utilizing it to see how it goes, and if they like it, they could implement it across the entire state of Ohio. But what it did, it is setting from one to however many teams are within the district, set it first through, say, 16, and then the coaches took that, and then they were able to position themselves. Mm-hmm. So it's not like a standard bracket if you're thinking NCAA Tournament March Madness with 68 teams and 64, one play 16, 215. It is not like that. Not like that, at least yet. So um, start is the three seed on the girls' side. If the seeds hold in girls D1, Anthony Wayne, the one seed, would face the two seed Fremont Ross in the district finals. The three seed start would face the four seed Springfield in the district finals. So uh, despite... You know, the start maybe being slid down from one or two to three, how they place themselves in the bracket, they are still primed to get to the district championship game and then win that, and then you could match up with the other side of those teams right there. Yeah, and I think when you look at how who went where, I, mean, I think the respect that start got in that in that three seed, I think it, it shows. And um, I, I think that they – I think that – 
what those four seeds hold, yeah. Fre- Fremont's the enigma out of those four teams because, like you yeah. mentioned it, you know, they, they played great against Central Catholic. You know, I was able to see that game. And, they, and when they, if they played like that every mm-hmm. night, they could beat anybody. Yeah, but then, like you said, the game before that they lost to Whitmer. The game after that they lost to Finley, um, who you know those are two teams on paper. Fremont has a better roster, right? But uh, you don't win it on paper. You yeah, win it between the lines. So that's a team. We'll see how they are in the tournament. You know, last year they got upset by Northview uh, early in the tournament, and you know, so we'll see what happens. Are they capable of, of being as good as that two seed indicates? Yep. Yep. But have they shown that they? get bumped a little bit earlier than maybe what people expect. Yep. So we'll see what happens. All right. We continue here on the BCSN Nation podcast. I'm Justin alongside Rhett. We are powered, as always, by Marco's Pizza. And we got a few more uh, segments here with the TAC girls' side. Toledo Christian won it. They've handled the TAC in recent years. And when talking about the bracket in Division Four, Toledo Christian, of course, we've mentioned it multiple times throughout the regular season here on the podcast. Their goal and objective is to get to state. They haven't been there ever as a program. They've gotten to the regionals. They've knocked on the door. They've kind of taken the baby steps necessary to get better and better and better and better. Mm -hmm. They are the one seed. They earned that one seed. They would taste on the two seed Woodmore in their district in the regionals they'd face teams like convoy crestview airsville uh lipsick Kaleida, mohawk carry hopewell loudon so those are the types of teams that tc is going to have to get through if they want to get all the way to the states down in uh dayton yeah and, and talking to coach wensink you know crestview is is a team that they got their eye on that that could come out of that other side and um, you know, I, I, to his credit, he has beefed up his schedule this year. As oh, well. big time! Playing the Dublin Kaufmans, the Medinas, Springfield, Anthony Waynes. You they know. played uh, Rocky River Magnificat, I think, recently. Yep, yep. yep they played Mags too. So, uh, and Mags is probably going to get to the regional in the Division One side. Yeah, uh, play. You know, it'll, coming out of that other other district. So he's done everything he can to put his kids in a position to play high level competition. Look to see where you're good at, where you need to get better at. You know, for tournament play and. Um, you know, I think when we saw them play Anthony Wayne last week, you know, Kendall Braden, you know, obviously can play, played at a very high level against the Division One competition. Um, Mackenzie Royal Davis is a factor inside. You know, I think for the, in, in Kalana Butler is very disruptive uh, defensively, and it really gets them into their transition game. Yep, and you mentioned Kendall Braden. She's a top 30 first-team All-BCSN nominee. For those who need a refresher, top 30 boys and girls on each side. We debuted it, released it last Friday. We'll narrow it down to the top 10 and 10 on Friday, February 24th, and then the final five deemed first-team All-BCSN on the boys and girls side on the finale of Game Day Nation Overtime on Friday, March 10th. We got one more segment to get to, Rhett. It's time for the BCSN Nation podcast question of the week. Send us your question on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook using the at BCSN Sports and hashtag BCSN Podcast. All right, Rhett, we touched upon it a little bit during our boys' Three Rivers Athletic Conference segment. Whitmer beat Central Catholic 56-45 to on January 10th. It is the BCSN game of the week. So what do we take from that first meeting between the Panthers and the Irish, and how do we apply that to Friday's rematch? Well, we, we just look at the, the, the facts of, of that ball game. Antoine West of Whitmer had 25. He had 20 at the half of that ball game. Pharrell House was also in double digits for Whitmer. And what that game really came down to was Whitmer was more aggressive in terms of, of, of paint points. They, they drove the ball in the paint, whether it was on the dribble or post-entry. And they made a living in there and got themselves much easier looks than what Central Catholic had, who I, I felt, in my opinion, was too jump shot happy in that ball game. Took too many threes, not rhythm threes, yeah. but just threes that you know that they that they took, and it, and it got them out of rhythm. And, and Whitmer was able to you know to win that ball game. I think you know the difference with Central from that night and, and three nights later when they played Perrysburg was that when they played Perrysburg, Central made a living in the paint. 13 of their 14 field goals against Perrysburg in the second half were from the paint. And that's when I think that's when they're at their best. And then when then, then when the defense collapses, then you get rhythm threes. You're mm-hmm. inside out, drive and kick, make the extra pass, open looks, and, and that's when they're at their best. So I think for Central that this time around, can you score in the paint consistently? If they can, they have a heck of a shot to win the ball game. If not, then you know I think Whitmer comes out on top again. 
All right, that game is the game of the week. Uh, some programming notes for you. So that game will be live on the community channel. Typically, our game of the week is on the BCSN2 channel, but not this week. We got the Walleye taking on Kalamazoo, so they will be on BCSN. Game Day Nation will be on BCSN2. Join Joel Sebastianelli. We also have Darren Cohn, and we have John Hobbs filling in for Rhett and Dion, who will be uh, off on Friday. But that Whitmer Central game on the community channel, we also have North U at Anthony Wayne, Cardinal Stritch at Toledo Christian, South U at Napoleon, Celine versus Bedford on the boys' and girls' side, Celine and Bedford. And we also have Gibsonburg at St. Mary Central Catholic. So we have plenty of hardwood action, and we got on the ice bowling green hockey taking on Perrysburg at BGSU's Slater Family Ice Arena. So plenty of action for you each and every Friday during the winter on Game Day Nation, Game Day Nation Overtime, and 13 ABC's basketball friday so uh rhett enjoyed the rest of this week and this weekend and we will be back next week with uh dion thompson here on the bcsn nation podcast powered by marco's pizza for rhett i'm justin thank you for watching and or listening wednesdays at three o'clock the latest edition of this podcast have a good one <laughs>